During the winter and spring, the white-throated sparrow is easily heard, but not always so easy to see. If you listen out during a walk, you might have heard his serene song in the distance. To spot one, listen out for their tranquil song or their high-pitched chirp, then scan bushes and shrubs nearby, or watch the ground for little movement. Typically, you won't see them visit your feeders. Instead, white-throated sparrows primarily forage on the ground below, flat surfaces, or around low branches. If you do have feeders, one way you can help them is to set a platform feeder just below your hanging feeder so they can easily find discarded and fallen seed. Watching them forage is a lot of fun too. They'll scoot in the leaves and in the snow and loosen up food. During the late spring, summer, and early fall months, they'll mostly eat insects, but as the ground freezes and books become a little harder to find, they'll begin foraging on the ground for seed. For much of the U.S., they're considered winter birds that travel south from very northern regions of North America after the breeding season is over. Fall travel is usually slower than the spring return to northern breeding territories, and most flocks travel at night and forage and rest during daytime. Researchers have also found that during migration, white-throated sparrows will flock with other sparrows of the same genus, as well as even travel with juncos. The southward migration usually takes place in September and October, and then by April and May, the white-throated sparrows will head back north to their breeding grounds. Once you do start really observing white-throated sparrows, you'll find that they come in two color variations, the white striped and the tan striped. Originally, researchers debated about the two forms. Some thought this was a way of telling males from females, others thought that the color difference was a signal of young birds versus older birds. It's clear now that these are just two different color morphs of the same species. And more recently, researchers have done studies comparing the two forms in terms of breeding behavior, aggression, and migration differences. Both morphs will interbreed, and some studies suggest each form will seek out their opposite. Breeding season begins in the spring when sparrows return to their northern breeding grounds. It's the female sparrow who will build the nest. Usually nests will be on the ground, under bushes, or just above the ground, and it will be made of moss, twigs, grass, and pine needles with a very neat cup shape. A female will have a clutch of up to six eggs and have up to two broods during the breeding season, and both the male and female help feed nestlings. Ways to help these little guys thrive during winter time is to put out protein and fat-rich seed. This includes peanut meats, sunflower, and safflower. Providing cover, such as small evergreen bushes and shrubs, are another great way to help protect them from predators and the elements. In fact, one study showed that white-throated sparrows prefer feeding sites closer to cover and will exhaust the food supply before moving into more open areas. And what this means is that they highly value predator protection. Predators of white-throated sparrows include raccoons, hawks, loose cats, owls, and even crows. Aside from their delicate, tranquil sound, other benefits of the white-throated sparrow include insect control and seed dispersal. The white-throated sparrow is a native sparrow in North America and is protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. If you've been hearing or seeing white-throated sparrows in your area, consider recording your observation with Cornell's eBird. The eBird map has some amazing features, allowing you to become citizen scientists and help everyone understand these birds a little bit more. Just taking a look on the site, we're able to see how far these birds have expanded their range, with one surprising observation in Iceland back in 2019, and some observations as far as Northern Europe. In the end, be on the lookout for these little guys and appreciate their sweet sound, cute behavior, and the great distance they travel to visit during the winter and early spring months.